such a divergence in retail names right now. You've got an Under Armour up 40% this year, and a lot of the department stores, and even Foot Locker, down double digits. What is this picture telling you? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you're Walmart, Amazon, Target, Costco, Home Depot, you're winning, right? That whole sector is winning. If you're online, you're winning. Online is growing more than 100% of all the growth. So online was up about 12% last quarter. Total retail, non-online, was up down about 2.7. So all the growth came online. So unless you're winning in the omni-channel or multi-channel business, you're going to lose. Now, Macy's is pretty good at that. Kohl's is pretty good at that. Actually, Foot Locker is pretty good at that. But it's still a very tough business when you've got people like Amazon moving into apparel and accessories. We know what they did in books and electronics. And so when you look at apparel and accessories, you say, well, that's where they're coming next. And then you've got all this other business going to these guys like Walmart and Target that are winning online. Jan, you've been talking about this for years, of course. Would people looking at the results from some of these mall-based retailers make a mistake if they assume the consumer was somehow getting weaker? The consumer is not somehow getting weaker. They're not quite as strong, actually, as they were last year. But the consumer is still very strong. Employment is still very good. Wages are still rising. It's pretty hard to blame this on the consumer. This is really just the transitional phase. We're moving to new kinds of retailing. You have to be able to invest to do that, and you have to be in the right places. And being on the mall is not the right place. Being off mall, off price, local, resale, or rental is the right place. Who do you stay away from if the president does follow through with his threat that we heard again overnight that $300 billion in Chinese imports that are not already under tariffs could go through? Well, then you stay away from everybody, right? Because it's going to really slow things down a bit. So it probably wipes out one year's worth of retail earnings. But if you want to stay with somebody, you're going to stay with the ones like Walmart that have great supply chain, lots of clout, well capitalized. You're going to stay with people like Target that have got the same sort of characteristics. And you're going to run away from people who are mostly apparel and not strong. It'd be a hard play if you wanted to be J.C. Penney, right? They're weak and they're a lot of apparel. So those kind of names are going to have a really tough time. The strongest supply chain people and the biggest players with the most capital are going to sustain the best as they move out of China and deal with the tariffs. Speaking of moving out of China, Jan, uh, we heard this from G3 last night. I know you've told me in the past that four years ago, half of apparel and handbags coming into this country were made in China. Today, that number is 15, from 50 That's to correct. 15. That's correct. So it's already we started happened to a large out. degree. How much more can we do? And this had nothing to do with tariffs. This had everything to do with Vietnam was cheaper, Bangladesh was cheaper. We were moving to places where it was cheaper to do business. The reason we all moved into China was it was the cheapest place to do business. Now it's not anymore. We'll get the rest of that out relatively fast if, in fact, these tariffs go through. Otherwise, it'll just be this gradual process like it's been. Right now, their factories are all full, but we'll be building new factories. And in fact, we're looking at 25 percent tariffs. Yeah, what are you hearing then from retail executives when it comes to the changes in the supply chain? To your point, where well, are we in that process? It's pretty straightforward. The first thing you do is say, what am I making in China that I can just sell in China and quit importing into the U.S. and change the production to some other factory that's not in China? So if you're selling into China and into Europe, out of China, that kind of works. So you just change right. your production around so that that 20 percent or so you've got in China is being sold to places other than the United States. Then the second thing you do is start looking at how to move the supply chain out. So you can ameliorate it some with that first strategy. Then the second strategy takes a year to 18 months to get done. I just wonder how much pain has already been felt. I mean, I'm looking at some of these names. Forget department stores, which have their own problems. But, you know, the specialty retailers were thought to be turning it around. Capri Holdings or Michael Kors down 56 percent from its highs. PVH down 50 percent from its highs. Tapestry down almost 50 percent from its highs. I mean, when do you look at these names, Jan, and think there's some value there? Well, you know, we were praising Stitch Fix, and they're down about 50 percent from their highs, too, I suspect. So it, it's not just the apparel people that we've traditionally looked at. It's also the online guys like Stixfitch that they haven't stayed up with the rest of retailing either. So when you look at that business, you say, well, right, we've got a big problem here and it will be much worse with a three, 
25 with a 25% tariff on it. However, that will go away over time and you'll want to own these companies, the ones that are going to make it, like Nordstrom's and Macy's and Kohl's and Foot Locker. But it's going to be hard to like Gap or anybody else that's mall based or anybody that's weak from the point of view of capitalization. It's only going to be the strong that survive and it'll take them a while to get everything back in order.